Hello and welcome to another ep- special episode of Baat Shat. Today, I'm very, very proud of having somebody right from here, from Canada. We've been covering a lot of shows. We've been inviting a lot of guests from across the ocean, which is in Pakistan or India. But tonight, we're in our continent. We're inviting somebody who's a big name in the Canadian cricket, in the Canadian cricket circles, a very well-known name. He's not very much out there. He's kept himself very much away for the last two to three years. We're very proud that he has picked us to be the platform where he will be coming and doing an interview with us. Uh, very much a professional player uh, in, an, in a harsh cricketing environment, which is Canada. Uh, it is very hard to find people who are so dedicated to the game of cricket. And he's one of the very few special ones. So without wasting further time, I'll take a short break. When I get back, Will with me will be a very special guest and you'll see him in, uh, in person. <laughs> All right, with me is none other than Junaid Siddiqui. Junaid, thank you so much for joining me tonight on Badshad. It is a pleasure having you here. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you, Samanway, for having me here. I'm it's doing really time. well. Yeah, and you know, I, I, you, you heard the intro when I talked about the he hides somewhere for the last two to three years. We haven't seen a lot of you. We've seen a lot of great performances from you. Uh, you know, you show up. I don't see you in two to three games in a tournament. All of a sudden, you show up. Big impact. You make your presence felt, and then you go away. So why is it? Why is there so much quietness around Junaid Siddiqui when when you have so much to offer to Canadian cricket? Um, well, not maybe quietness in media, but not so much uh, in um, in terms of cricket, where I have to like this is uh, we are professional cricketers. The job is really to go out there and perform and do well for your country, and that's what I'm doing nonstop. And I, at least I try to. Uh, you know, sometimes you pull it through, sometimes you don't. But uh, yeah, not really shy. But then I think there's a job in hand. And I try to focus on it more, uh, more on that side and don't go on the other side if I don't need to. Uh, yeah. But you caught me today. So I'm right in front of you. Exactly. So, Jared, let you know, I talked about, you know, I would not see you in a team goes to a tournament, two to three games, you're not there. All of a sudden, we see you pop up and you perform. Right? Uh, what is the perception? you create with the coaches that you've played. I've seen you do that in GT20. I've seen you do that in the America's Cup. What is the perception of perception of those coaches when they see you come and perform? What is the feedback you get from them? <laughs> feedback? Well, um, if you go back from the starting, uh, when I started uh, in 2011, uh, the, the coming to the team uh, itself was... Uh, it's a big thing because you're coming to an ODI team back then, 2011, and you're uh, competing as the one of the best, my favorites, uh, people like Balaji Rao and all those players with so much experience with first class. And also, uh, you, you have to make sure that you are somewhere near them before you can take their places or replace them. So it's a huge gap uh, going into into that uh, system. So it was a lot of competition. Uh, if you are doing really well in Canadian system, it was not enough back then. Um, I had to go out somewhere. Hey, if you want to show it, go somewhere in first class uh, country because it's an ODI team and perform and come here. So the, we did a lot more of those. It wasn't easy for just come in and make a debut. And uh, it's okay if you, I, I didn't perform, you can get the next game. No, it wasn't like this. Uh, getting into a, a ODI team is a big honor, a big, a big thing for myself. It was, and uh, till today I cherish it. Um, so yeah, like coming from that mentality, it, it, it helped. It's just always in competition. It doesn't bother me if I, if the team is doing well and the, the coach's mindset is different last uh, two, three years. And uh, they know better what they want the system, uh, team to be. And they, coming in and giving me crucial games means that they have a lot of trust in me that Junaid will come in and uh, he won't need too many games to warm up. And it's, it's still myself, gives me a lot of confidence. It's a very real skill. That you don't find nowadays, right? Coming and so, how much these franchise cricket, you know? And I'll come back to you this question later. Where I want to go is you talked about 2011. You started playing for Canada. You're the first homegrown player that's played first class cricket on your own for Canada, or not for Canada, but you represented Canada in a first class system out in Sri Lanka. So let's go back to Nate Siddiqui wanting to become a cricketer. So. Let's you know. Let's take the viewers back into your journey. When did you start thinking about becoming a cricketer? And, and it was 
Yeah. It was always that uh, small story. Uh, my friends used to ask me uh, when I moved uh, uh, in school life, when I moved from uh, Pakistan uh, uh, to Canada 22 years ago. And uh, this, I remember someone in the school system asking me, hey, Junaid, which club you're going to represent or which, which you know, what's your goal? I was like, man, I'm going to represent Canada. That was from that thought was always in my head. Uh, how, where, and how it's going to happen, that I didn't know at that point of time. What I didn't ask anybody what's the rule and what's the regulations here and what do, what do I need to do. I just knew that uh, I always believe in playing good cricket, uh, be a good team player, and it will take you a long way. So, Junaid, if I was to take you back those years, if there's a youngster watching this that wants to play cricket in Canada, what sort of advice will you give him uh, in to create the journey to come all the way into the Canadian team? Where should they start? I think it's, it's always, I started from high school cricket. I, uh, and uh, I was fortunate that time of um, when I was uh, playing in high school, some of the coaches uh, who were involved in the national team saw me early. And they pointed it out and they, they appreciated me. So I, I could see that there's a positive vibe and getting into uh, into it. So I think recent times, it's, 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 it's became a little easier, I would say, compared to if you go back to 10, uh, 12, 13 years where um, school cricket and under 19 was pretty much nothing because the, the people who used to play in the national team used to age group used to be very high. So okay. you need to play some more cricket. You need to get a little older to play for that team. Who would do that? Nayaka and... Uh, there were a few other coaches, uh, I would say Rupert Gooms, people might know, don't know their no names. They were just in the system 2000, uh, 2000, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, who thought that, you know what, we need new blood coming in. We need to bring young guys in so when the guys, these guys are getting old, so we have someone at the back to start making A team or B team. They started this concept at that point of time. Uh, so when you ask me what they need to do, I think I it's very straightforward. Skills, uh, uh, fitness goes together. So start from there. Play uh, whatever club you're playing for. Try to be the best in your club. When you're best in your club, they will, someone will see you. You will come to the provincial side. You will do good over there. And then there's under 19, and there's all the system in place for them. And the motivation is just not Canada anymore. The motivation is GT20 or T20 to tournaments all over the world. So it's it's bigger crowd uh, also because GT20 have uh, attracts so much. The T20 cricket has attracted so much. So many, uh, so much more crowd now that there's a lot more interest from youngsters. So it's very simple. You know, when you talk about GT20, you talk about all those franchise tournaments that are popping up, T20 tournaments around the world. You know, you talked about back in the days, it wasn't easy to play for Canada. You had to come, you had to go outside and prove yourself in a first class team and come back, right? Not for everybody, yeah. Okay, <laughs> that's true. Has this become easier because of this T20 cricket, because this franchise cricket? I was talking to Shadab Kabir, Basit Ali from Pakistan, and they were saying it's become so much easier to get into the Pakistan team now. Has the same concept kind of surfaced in Canada as well? It's become easier to play for Canada? Would you say that compared to your... Uh, with, with GT20 system, how they have made players, some of the players available for GT20, which are known in the system, uh, they made them... E it was it become easier for them to come to the, the that roster for GT20 because Cricket Canada is trying to bring new faces. Yeah, for those guys, it's definitely easy because when, once uh, right now it's just a work in progress, right? Once those guys get a chance to play in GT20 in a year or two, it will become easier for us to get those. We can if they perform, it becomes easier for them to play into the national team, and why not? So, you know, in the past, today I've sat down with the past president of Cricket Canada, I've sat down with the new president of Cricket Canada, and they speak highly of GT20. From your side, as a player's perspective, how important is GT20 for Canadian cricket, as a from a player's perspective? Uh, it is very important. I, I believe yeah, GT20 is, I mean, T20 is the way to go uh, in North American market. We know this for the longest time. All of us who live here, you know, we people don't like to watch the longer format of the game whatever love is there, but they, but they love this G, uh, T20 format. And T20 gives you that. And it gives you all the excitement. It has all the big names coming in. Uh, it's a huge achievement for Cricket Canada, bringing it to Canada, first of all, and uh, running it yearly is another um, achievement itself. Um, uh, and I think uh, it, it's just going to give us, it's going to give us, it's going to produce good cricketers for us. It's going to produce uh, viewership for us. 
uh, it, it will it will bring everything we wanted in in a in a in, of course it will take some time but we are getting there so you personally have a great one day pro provincial record you have uh, you know longer format you've done well you've played first class cricket why is it that lately we've just seen you in t20 cricket have you become somewhat sort of a specialist t20 specialist um see it, it all goes back to starting when i got into the team the system was uh, we were short of bowlers uh, kc was injured at that time when i walked into the team arvir bardwan uh, got also injured so it was only henry and they had a uh, few other guys who were just get, coming into the team there was not many people who could bowl with the new ball at that time i, I think i was one of one of few uh, leg spinner who could bowl with the brand new ball uh, then and not give a lot of runs so and if you go back to those years there was like few uh, power plays it was one two and three if you remember it, yeah. in Monday cricket it was 35 hours and so they started using cuz I did that job for my team and in one days uh and then t20s so the the only problem was that what was happening over there if you go to the scores card the score the other teams were making against us was 300 250 plus a lot of runs so the instruction i used to get from my captain hey man you know we are leaking runs from the other side we want you to and stop the runs in rest rather than going for wicket for a leggy it is um, for a leggy he would he would love to come after 20 over or 15 over and flight the ball get hit for a six as the shame one says and then get a wicket this is what the process is right and i changed that perception because in my head i was like you know what as a team player that's what my role is right now to stop those runs and when i come to bat you know uh, uh, score freely when i can so i uh, what maybe this the captain uh, captainship or the leadership and the management ship over there was different it was michael dytons to uh, gus logis uh, to outsider uh, coaches uh, so that was the plan used to be and uh, it was more of that of me this is what they've expected me uh, even though they they said we would love to you know give you free hand to do your thing but we can't afford to right now because we're leaking runs or whatever the situation is and i love to ball in a tough situation i was i always wanted to be a player who want to raise his hand when the toughest time arrived power plays uh last overs in between whenever the bat batsman is set i always wanted to ball in those situations um or bad in a situation where we need to you know um uh, need a big partnership to stay there or tough bowling is happening so i want to bat or feel in the toughest positions uh, it, it gives me motivation it gives it always get me going and uh, from there until today that's what, how i am and i wanted to be like that so i think uh, when uh, i don't know if my first uh, my first first class game was pretty good for canada uh, i took three wickets and then um, i was 38 not out i was about to make my debut 50 but then i didn't have the support on the other side uh, i never played any first class after that so, but it's, it's it's very different like you can't Blame anybody, but yet my role was different back then. Um, but I'm proud of what I have uh, done and uh, done those times uh, with whatever they asked me to do, I was able to. But uh, if you go around and when I need to do fly the ball and you know, as a yeah. I enjoy it, I love it. Uh, but then whatever is there for me, and however they want me to use, I'm just available and uh, I love it. I I will never complain. I like those challenges. And you know, uh, prove yourself every single time. Well, this is why I think they sometimes you're used as an impact player. Big games, Junaid Siddiqui comes in. Like I've noticed that. But I you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick your crit cricketing brain. There's something very interesting you talked about. You know, in ODI cricket or or limited overs cricket or even T20s, T10s, uh, you don't ever see a leg spinner starting off because you know it's easy. You see more uh, off spinner. I bowled off spin myself and I've uh, opened uh, bowling. Because it's easier to grip the race seam. It's so much easier as a finger spinner to grip that. As a leg spinner, it's very hard to grip that ball, right? So yeah. how do you make that adjustment, Junaid, when you were asked to bowl in the opening overs? As a cricketer, how do you make that adjustment? Uh, I never thought about it before. Uh, uh, when uh, I was asked to do it, I I was like, I love it. I will do it. Uh, I just I I was just in nets. I was just trying to find ways how to grip balls. And not give any excuse that if it's wet or if it's brand new ball is slipping from my hand i just try to find ways how i can hold it i start making my own grips and it start working for me i never thought that hey you know what let me come after 16 over 16 over no no no. i said no this is my job i'll do it and i start just finding different ways and enjoy, start enjoying it so i think you know it's funny you talk about your success that you took it back to the nets and you put those hard hours in 
to learn the art, right? I was talking to Ezaz Chima and he's coached Baba Raz. He's played with Baba Razam in Central Punjab in the Pakistan domestic scene. And he said, after we were done our, our four hour session, Baba would go and do two hours more on his own. Yeah. How important is it for a cricketer that wants to grow to put in those hard hours? It is very important. Says, the thing is, uh, let's say you want to represent your country, right? It comes within yourself because uh, if you just want to do that's it. And this is set for us. The schedule is from here to here and you're done. Uh, you will just be a normal casual cricketer. Uh, you might have a lot of talent, but then you still be uh, achieving on good days. But when the bad days comes, you will not never survive. So a good cricketer uh, will always go and put extra hours when if you, cricket nowadays or even back then, uh, don't take any uh, credit away from all the guys who played back then, if, even till today, fitness comes uh, you can do it your own. There is no excuse. You can just go and do it. Uh, like extra hours, you can just do it yourself, and you don't have to need. You need don't. You don't need any help. So all these excuses is for players um, or for anybody who's. You will see those guys will never make it to the top, or you you will not see their name for a long time. So is it extremely important to put those extra hours in without someone watching you? So yeah, nobody needs to see you. So right, you're putting yeah. it for yourself because that time. Whatever you have put in, in three, four, five years, people will see it in the ground. Perform, you're performing. So, Junaid, you know, you talked about fitness, physical fitness, and all that. Ten years, you've almost played international cricket. You've been playing cricket for a long time. I still see you as the fittest guy on the field. You know, you are very easily competing with youngsters. So, what's the secret? The secret is eating well and good genes. <laughs> from my parents, <laughs> then uh, it's it's Salman Bay. It's a lot of hours of nobody seeing you and you working hard. It's a lot of hours of thinking what you really want to do in one year, two years, and three years, and executing it. It's a lot of um, hours of um, um, your family hour time to cook for you that the things that it is healthy for you. So it's it's very easy for someone to just see you and say, hey, you're fit, or say you 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 did this or you did that random stuff but it's 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 a whole package it comes with uh, pros and cons uh, it's for me it's been uh, continuous uh, this this eagerness to play this world cup always been like this i wanted to go for a world cup for canada take canada to a world cup and people just talk about until uh, i shouldn't talk about people i should talk about myself i i have often hear that oh we made it to world cup i wanted to be a guy uh, who who goes, who takes this team to World Cup and in World Cup, it's, it's not enough for us because we are good enough. Our team is good enough. I really believe that. To go and make make the World Cup and do really well in the World Cup means that we make it to playoffs. And this is the mindset I have. And I'm still, I still haven't, um, I, we haven't got it there. So I'm still running to it and I'm keeping myself fit. And I'm very sure, inshallah, if Allah, uh, Keep me going this way and I have, I have no doubt that we will play World Cup and we will do really well and this is the goal and that's I'm keep going because of that. So you know, uh, you, know, you know I will reason I mentioned that question is I was talking to a few Pakistani players and they said media pulls us down. <laughs> right? We're not allowed to read any media news any news are about us when we're on a tour. Uh, I was reaching out to Shadab Khan and he said the same thing Salman Bhai not during the tour they don't let us talk or or even read newspapers. So this is why, how much media training, you know, should that be part of an international cricket? You played international cricket. Should that be part of an international cricketer's journey? How to talk to media? How to take feedback? You know where I'm going with this. <laughs> yeah, well, I think there's, for you're talking about can, Canadian players or overall? Canadian players, overall, overall. I'm just talking to you because you played franchise cricket as well, right? You've seen some professional setups. You've seen first-class setups. What do you think? Is there enough training for international players out there or players that professional players? I think it's, 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 you know, like uh, players who have done well in this in the in the system in the cricket, international cricket, uh, it is very expected of them to take uh -huh. negative and positive already. So it's not that they are going to an institute to understand when something like that happened, what, what, what to do, what, how to react. I think those guys are big names because how to take those, uh, uh, I would say, constructive negative uh, comments against them to use it, yeah. to use it uh, in a positive way 
and and that's how you probably sometimes see in a cr cricket field when a when a guy gets a fifer or a hundred and he has a note in his book hey i you know i i saw you guys on yeah, tv yeah. and i have to show you something here i took a fifer i'm not retiring soon all that stuff so it's some it's some time and i think a good player will always take this in a good way keep it to them with them until they prove it themselves and then you know they show it to the world i think that's the best way and i really don't know um if you really need to teach someone like this something like this uh when you're playing cricket especially i'm talking about cricket it's a it's a team sport uh you're not always going to go and score 100 you're not always going to go and take five for so you got to be you you will have bad days a lot of bad days and good days so i think cricket teaches you to humble yourself and it teaches you to take all the constructive uh notes for anybody and understand if you know you can take even let's say it was 100 notes you can take one out i think a wiser or a good cricketer would always do that so you know you talked about and you've played enough cricket junaid you've had a great journey cricketing life so far 10 to 15 years you played uh, you've talked about good days and bad days how do you buck yourself up on a bad day like how do you pull yourself out of it because sometimes it's just like ah oh, i can't do this no more how do you snap yourself out of it what do you do as a cricketer i think going into your zones um, it's always looking into the goal that you made end of the day what was the goal and uh, why are you here uh you had a bad day and you have two bad days or three bad days in a row um if you are a person who will give up uh you would you won't be there still so a person who who has bigger goals uh something to look up to they will always snap out yes uh, uh this kind of days comes to your life and uh, you just got to learn to deal with them uh, everybody deals with them in their own way uh, some will go and just go outside play golf or someone will just talk to their families and they have different rituals and they will do and everybody has their they are professional enough enough to to understand that they have to snap out of it sometime with the help of friends um sometime with movies so they have yeah. their own things to do and uh, i still i still think if you can do this uh, or someone who's not able to do this they don't last in international cricket for a very long time so i'll tell you where i'm going with this uh, you know you've had a pretty good successful career with cricket canada with cra canadian cricket uh, you perform you've been an impact player every time you show up in the team you perform there's something different you do you were one of the very few contracted players right so why is it that i was when, yeah exactly when there was a contract offered yes absolutely so why is it that you know there were times that you were contracted but you were not in the team and what i'm going with this is how did you deal with those times see uh, all the guys get into the team when you're contracted oh no when i was in the con I, when i had the contract i was until 2015 i played all until i yeah. was contracted uh, yeah. thank god i was able to perform for my team and i uh, keep playing uh, after that there was team management changes everybody has their own views as i said captain have their own setup new captain uh, i'm still in the system so yeah like for see i'm a player i just want to make sure that my fitness is there every time i've been called um i when i go and play my game i don't think that i played 7 years or 8 years and good years and i've done well against this and i just forget everything i take that as one first game and maybe my debut game in my head that i have to perform the same way i performed in my first game so that thing in me keep keeps me going and i don't even think that uh i didn't play one game or two game recent times that I, as you mentioned that you have been seeing me not play too many but when i came and play um uh, i do well um it's just because i in my thing in my brain or head i'm ready so whenever i'm ready i'll just go and perform and i think we all should be the same way whatever the need of a team whenever they need you you should be ready to perform and it doesn't matter how long you play and i'm taking a leaf out of your history book uh, gt20 last year you were in the draft you 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 weren't then you came in you <laughs> didn't play the games and you show up and i mean you can share with me the what the performance there was in that game when you actually played the game um <laughs> uh, yeah like let's skip what happened in the draft for yeah, the exactly. i just as i said before i don't want to get into negatives it was it yeah. was a mistake or whatever happened uh but yeah. i i i when i did whatever happened i got into the team a little late because of some technical issues um 
but you know, the team that I got into, I, I just see everything works works so well for you. A guy who everybody compared me with, and probably you guys watch on the TV, uh, Afridi and me. Yeah. Uh, played playing the game, and um, it was a big Super honor. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it was it's just experience of itself, and uh, going into a team where um, uh, Shodi was doing so well. It's Shodi, what a what a guy, and uh, Lala player. itself, very very good guys. Uh, Captain Munro, uh, getting to a team which, which was already set and there was already two leggies in the team. Uh, so uh, someone said, hey, Junaid, congrats, system, whatever issue was solved and you're playing, but there's two leggies all the team. I swear to God, I never thought once that uh, I will uh, I will be sitting. Now, it's just not the negative posit- uh, 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 confidence. It's a, pos- a considered confidence that I know I can offer once they see me. I'll be fine. Good to go. So a good uh, training session. Right after that, Lance said, "Hey, uh, buddy, uh, they call me Boom Boom." They said, uh, "You will be uh, you will uh, be playing tomorrow, and you will be bowling with the new ball." So I walked in, and uh, thank God I bowled and uh, did pretty good. And then all the, as you say, so, just how much pressure because all the technical issues that kept you away you mentally stayed focused on that task right and then you came to team and then you were holding while you were standing on that run up holding the ball in your hands in it what was going through your mind <laughs> <laughs> nothing more than that uh, how do i not get hit in power play because the gt20 <laughs> grounds are very small right <laughs> so um and with the new ball um uh, bowling against the wind the, the role was, again, to make sure, Junaid, that we get through this power play with this big big guys who are standing in front of you. So the damage control pretty much. And um, the way Munro gave me the ball was so much confidence. Same, same as DJ said uh, in the first year when we played uh, GT20. And the same way uh, DJ threw the ball to me is like, boom, boom is your job. What do you want? That confidence from these guys gives like boosts you so much that I was like, you know what, I'm up to it. Not once I thought that I won't do that this job because I am. I wanted to do any. I wanted to play anywhere they wanted me to. So I just I had the ball and I swear to God I was thinking because um, I don't bowl too much uh, before the game. Yeah. So Monroe noticed that and he said, uh, "Hey buddy, uh, you didn't want to bowl a little bit more?" I was like, "No." I'm um, fine uh, with whatever, right? So, and then he came to me, he asked for the field, and I, I told him before even he asked, this is what I want. And then that, and he's like, buddy, all yours, whatever you want. That gave me the, so much confidence. Uh, I just did what I did, and I just hope I can do better when I play next. So, Junaid, new management's come in. So, uh, Kenan, there's a lot of hope because obviously with everything new, there's always an opportunity to do something different. Uh, as a cricketer, from a cricketer's perspective, what can you give back to them in terms of advice, in terms of, listen, here's what we need to do. Is there an opportunity you see that we need to change uh, to make cricket better in Canada? I think they are well-qualified guys uh, coming to the system and they understand the weaknesses uh, we had in past or what needs to be done. Uh, they are on it. That's their job and that's why they are elected. Uh, Absolutely. As a as a cricket cricket player, uh, if you ask me, in the system changes, and I've said it this before also. Uh, I think if you look at any country, it could be a test playing nation or it could be associate nation. Uh, the system of cricket, coaches, um, uh, selectors, and, and overall management uh, management side of cricket is taken care. Majority of it taken care by uh, your ex players. Who have done something for Canada? Who has so much passion? Who, who who left their jobs to play for Canada? So they did so much for you that I think they deserve to be in the system to understand, uh, to take you. Uh, they will understand because I think they could be a good um, a bridge between the players' differences and management to understand what's happening both sides. Uh, managements are management; they know how to manage it. But then you definitely need your uh, as your coach in coaching system, could you be provincials or could be in national side that you need your, your guys who, who have done well in international cricket. So uh, if you ask me for one thing, I would say you need to bring those guys back into the system um, to to connect with the players. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So you need to. I think it's it's nothing out of the books. It's something that always works. So I, I think. 
sorry, uh, sorry to cut you off, but uh, yeah. what what basically you're referring to is what India has done. Rahul Dravid comes back and run, runs the under 19 setup. Pakistan's going down that path. England's done it. Many countries have done that. Uh, West Indies have done it. Uh, Afghanistan is taking care of using uh, you know former cricketers as well. So I think this is very good for cricket overall, and I think we're very blessed to be playing cricket in Canada. We're very blessed to have people that put so much volunteer time. It takes a lot to put those time in and not get any money to keep cricket going. So very blessed to be there. So I think it, it'll only make it better, like you said, if former cricketers are involved that have played cricket at that level, that have seen things like someone with your stature who's played first class cricket. If what is it that you learned when you played, you stayed in Sri Lanka for a bit, you played that, you saw it firsthand, how the setup is done. What would you bring back or love to bring back from there? that you could apply to Canada. Different places, different countries, I get it. But what is one thing you can pick? You can say, if I bring this back, apply it to Canada, it'll make uh, us produce better players. Is there something that stood out for you? Um, uh, obviously, the, the first thing stood out for me was playing cricket nonstop over there. Uh, yeah. Training, yeah. you could train anytime. Uh, uh, and see, if you talk about the differences and is completely different setup in associate level cricket compared to test playing nation because I played in Sri Lanka. Uh, and the, when I went there, I didn't play for Canada then. Uh, Pubdu Dasnayaka was the one who, who said, I believe you can play. Uh, can you give me some of your time? Because I was in 30 man World Cup squad for 2011. And he wanted some of his players to go and keep playing in case of some injury in the team or, you know, if they need any backups. And so some players are still playing actively because over here was winter. So for me, it was a blessing because first time in my life, I was able to play non-stop cricket for six months. I stayed there for six months, all during World Cup and all. Uh, I was able to do well, get a contract there. So that changed everything for me. And what, what was really important because at in that time, I was just eating, sleeping, doing everything just cricket. So if I have to bring anything, and if you feel, uh, what's the difference? You, you, I think you mentioned it before. What's the difference between as uh, in Canada? What can we bring here? Uh, and why? I think you you also mentioned that what's the difference between uh, when they when you guys play international cricket? What's it? What's it? What's a uh, um, gap like? I think the biggest is uh, in test playing nation. All your mistakes, all all your grooming is done in first class system. You might be a talented player that bring you to first class system where all the grooming is done. Uh, it could be um, your action, it could be your fielding, it could be anything. It could be reading the wicket, uh, which is done in first class system. And so when you come to the national side, there's no excuses. 80% of your job is done uh, from your coaches there. Now it's up to you how you're going to perform international cricket, how you're going to take the pressure. But in associate level cricket, when you go play international cricket, the you're coming from club level cricket and then you play for Canada. Now, the gap in between is huge. So the guys who are playing for Canada, they have to make sure that while they are playing, debuting, they need to understand how to react, how to play, how to walk, uh, how to think, how to read wickets, all that while they are debuting for Canada or while they are playing for Canada. So if you don't get a lot of games, the player will get uh, those Canadian guys or associate guys will take longer time to get to that point where they will start uh, performing like to their potential compared to the other countries where the first class system is so we need if we can we need to bring a consistent base uh, some some sort of a tournament which is between international cricket and club cricket where you can groom that the, those 50 guys or 60 guys and have a big competition and it has to have it has to happen every year and has to have different coaches who can throughout the year coach them. So there's one thing that we can bring in uh, effectively. And I, I see it. Why not? G20 is here. Uh, and, and, and and there is more interest. So people will want to do it. And if we go that, that direction, I think we can eliminate a lot of uh, uh, mistakes or we can educate our players better before they play international cricket. And not that I wasn't already very proud of our Canadian players, Canadian team, but you, what you just shared with me, I think makes me feel even more proud of our Canadian players because the fact that you go into a completely new environment, harsh environment, you've never played, yet you have to, you know, get settled with so many new things, yet they're able to compete, <laughs> yet they're able to win games, 
yet they're able to take teams to the wire you know games to the wire i think that speaks kudos for the talent canada has for the the players we're producing despite a system which is you know f- held back for 8 months by snow <laughs> yeah by the sea by the weather we can't practice out there indoor practice is completely different when you're out there right and match practice is always ahead of the net practice no matter which way you put it so i think junet i really thank you for all the time you were able to give me today i know i told you half an hour we've gone overboard a bit but that's me i just love to talk but you you know the things you shared with me were just so uh, in some ways very uh, wonderful for me to hear and for our viewers to hear uh, and i hope you could come back again on one of our shows and share more of your experience i think there's so much players like you have to offer to the system to cricket in general in our country like ours uh, you've basically dedicated your life to cricket and we're very proud of uh, having someone like you Canada's first homegrown first class cricketer uh, i love saying that that is the title of our video as well junet any final words before we uh, say goodbye to our viewers uh no again thank thank you very much sonan bhai for having me here um you guys are doing a good job and i really enjoy your show uh so best of luck to you thank you junet uh, goodbye from my side junet and uh, i'll continue talking to our viewers here thank you very much thank you Guys, that was Junaid Siddiqui. What a wonderful, wonderful gentleman, humble personality he is. Again, the Canadian system is full of people like that, and we need to appreciate people like him who've done so much for cricket, given so much of their life to cricket. We hope we can draw on his experience in the future. Uh, that's a you know message to my friends at Cricket Canada, all our friends at Cricket Canada. People like Junaid can do so much for our cricket, for our Canadian cricket. Let's let's tap on their shoulders. Let's get them in. let's learn from that that's all i had for for the episode tonight keep watching bachad make sure you like and subscribe this video leave any comments you may have uh, that you may see and you want to share with us and again keep it positive because if together if we keep it positive we can grow a lot farther than we are uh, now thank you again for watching bachad it has been a pleasure hosting junaid as well as being here with you thank you again for watching i'm signing out now your host salman khan good night